Hi everybody, uh, this is Todd Zarwell and uh, I wanted to show you IDOC's Oblique Cross Cylinders Calculator which is something that I know I personally don't use on a uh, daily basis but I find very useful in certain situations. So when you're logged into IDOC you can go to the Oblique Cross Cylinders page and you'll see a form like this and I try to make it real you know, real straightforward and easy to use. So uh, there's three columns. The first one is the contact lens power. So I can type in the powers of a contact lens in just a, a normal uh, format. So I'll say minus 5, minus 1.75, axis 70. And you know, I tried to make this real visual. Uh, for everything that you type in here, it'll show you um, the powers on an optical cross, so you can really kind of visualize how these powers are lining up on the eye. And the same thing is true for this middle column, the over refractions. So let's just say our patient has, uh, why don't we say Plano minus 75 and axis, uh, why don't we say 60. And again, it'll just kind of what did I do? Minus, oop, 0 0.75. There we go. Uh, it'll just show that on the optical cross too. And then the third lens is the suggested trial lens. So it, um, you know, uh, we'll do an oblique cross cylinders calculation, show you the results, and uh, show the results on an optical cross. And we can see that, you know, in this case, we need more power in the uh, meridian that is 90 degrees away from the axis, which is 60. And uh, you can kind of look at those meridians and it just makes sense. Uh, you can also denote the lens rotation simply by clicking the lens. Or, you know, if you want to uh, fine tune it, you can use these arrows here too. So why don't we just say 15 degrees and uh, here's our result. We just need to add some sill. And the axis, the original lens was 70. It's saying that, you know, the best lens would be at 63 degrees. Uh, from here, we can also compare this to existing lenses. So if we tell the calculator that we're dealing with a, let's say a biofinity toric lens, biofitor, uh, we can specify that, and it will look at that lens and see exactly what powers it comes in. And it does come in a minus five, minus 2.25 axis 60. And because of that, uh, we should have a lens that, in theory, should work well for this patient, assuming that it sits in the eye exactly like the original trial lens did. Uh, and because of that, you know, it says that the potential vision for this lens is very good. Of course, we all know that there's a lot of variables when it comes into this, but um, mathematically, this lens should be a good good option. Uh, this suggestion feature is really helpful for when we start pushing the limits. So let's say instead of 0.75, let's say we over-refracted uh, a buck and a quarter of cell. And if we do our calculation here and go with this biofinity toric lens again. Uh, so our suggested lens now is a 2.75, but a lot of lenses don't go that high, including the biofinity toric lens. So what it does is it makes an adjustment. Instead of 275, it just finds the highest cell power or the closest cell power it can, which is a 2.25. And then to make up for the change in the cell power, it adds a quarter to the sphere to keep the spherical equivalent. And it tells us that you know we're correcting um, most of our patient's prescription, but there'll be uh, a half diopter of uncorrected astigmatism. Because of the changes it made, the spherical equivalent will be zero. And it's still saying that, you know, with a half diopter of uncorrected astigmatism, we should still have the potential vision of, of 2025. So um, hopefully this lens might still be a good choice, even though it's, it's uh, undercorrecting the cell a little bit. You know, if we take that to a, a bigger extreme, let's just say, over refraction came up with two and a quarter. Well, then we're starting to undercorrect the sill by quite a bit more, and um, it's saying that we'd probably get worse than 2030 vision. And you know, this gives us a chance to um, make a decision and say, you know what, uh, this might be just unacceptable for my patient, and I might just need to to choose a different brand. So hopefully. Um, yeah, uh, this is useful for everybody. And again, 
Uh, it's not something that we all do on a regular basis. Some people use it more than others, but uh, it's a nice tool to have in your tool belt when, uh, when you're in this situation, especially dealing with some of these higher cell patients or weird axes, and we're getting um, strange results. Sometimes it's just useful to look at this and just kind of visualize how the powers are lining up and getting, you know, making a decision about what we need to, what we need to change.